So a comment I get on my channel a lot, particularly on my income report videos, goes something like this. It seems like most of your money is generated from being a YouTuber. Do you make any money from selling paintings, like a real artist? And honestly, that is a totally fair comment to make. It's true. Most of my income right now is generated from being a YouTuber, but I actually don't think that that makes me any less of a real artist. And I actually think that it's a much smarter way of starting a sustainable art career as opposed to jumping in direct sales right away, especially in this day and age. But let me explain. <laughs> So in my video, How to Launch a Successful Art Career in 2022, I broke down my roadmap for how I like to think about starting an art career into four phases. And this is just how I like to think of things. This could look totally different for you and by no means is it the end all be all only do this kind of thing way to be a creative professional in this day and age. You can do lots of things. This is just my specific approach to the kind of art career that I want to have. Phase one is the starting phase. I like to call it the getting your shit together phase because it's kind of like exactly that. Figuring out what you want your art career to look like, beginning to market yourself, building a portfolio, laying the foundations for basically everything that you want to do. This could look very different from how I've done it. You might not want to start a YouTube channel, you might want to market yourself in galleries or art fairs, and that would look like investigating that, maybe trying out some very low cost options, doing your research, building a portfolio. You generally have to have a lot of paintings in order to make up that booth fee at art fairs. So I think it's important to have a very robust kind of a body of work and to also have a reliable style. So you're probably going to want to work on your portfolio the most for that kind of thing. But phase two is the strategy phase where you develop a marketing strategy, figure out how to kind of set yourself apart from the rest of the crowd and begin to seriously try and build an audience on social media. At least this is what I'd recommend. You could also be expanding your collector base through things like an email list. Maybe you have a QR code on the back of your business card and when someone buys your work at an art fair, they scan that QR code, send it for your newsletter, and then they get alerts whenever you have booths at new art fairs, release new collections, have studio sales, whatever. I think it's just really important to have some kind of way to communicate with the people that are interested in your stuff. That could look like social media, it could look like an email list or like an email newsletter. Whatever way that works best for you, go for it. But I do think that people have to know of your work to exist in order for you to be able to sell it to them. Does that make sense? Then phase three is where the money comes in. I don't think that you should necessarily be focusing on sales until this point. People, again, won't be able to buy your work if they don't know that you exist. Phase three is basically in a nutshell where you start to add income streams until you reach a point where you can take your art full time. It's all about making money. Maybe that looks like getting sponsor deals on YouTube. Maybe that looks like having affiliate marketing links in your video descriptions. But maybe that looks like having your artwork in art galleries. Maybe it looks like teaching courses. Maybe it looks like, I don't know, like offering commissions. It could be literally anything. I have lots of videos on income stream options for artists, but basically, you want to add them one at a time, not all right away, okay? Like, I know that my income report videos might seem very intimidating if you're just starting out, but that's not really how I intend them. I just want you to see what's possible. Like, my art career is just one in millions, right? Like, there are so many ways to make this work, but I want to be very open and transparent about how I'm making it work for me. I generally recommend that you add passive income streams first. That really helps dip your toes in the water. You don't have to have that huge initial investment of purchasing packaging and inventory. You can kind of like dip your toes in, understand how sales works, begin to register for sales tax collection, get that PO box, do all of that stuff without having such a huge investment in the outcome. So things like digital products is a great way to 
understand how sales work, begin to build out your sales funnels on whatever marketing strategy you're using, and then just kind of earning a little bit of money here and there to kind of build your confidence a little bit. And then exploring more active income streams like having an online shop. Phase four is where you expand on that initial success by doing things like collaborating with other artists, branching into new areas of the art industry, just offering more stuff and be starting a podcast, building your like little empire out enough that if one of your income streams falls, you're still good. You can still keep your business afloat. You want to kind of make this a very stable, sustainable career for you. But the reason that direct sales, like selling your work or starting to make money, doesn't really come into play until phase three is mostly because I want you to minimize your risk financially. I would much rather you take a year or two to build up an audience and get comfortable with marketing yourself and have a cohesive body of work and then start selling and sell out way faster, be able to recoup that initial investment rather than selling right away, spending maybe hundreds of dollars on inventory, money that you don't have, and then being incredibly disappointed when you don't make that back and maybe you can't make rent that month. I am a very risk averse person, mostly because I grew up in a very low income household and a low income kind of environment. And so I'm not risk tolerant. I am very risk averse. I am all about minimizing my financial risk. And that's why I've waited for a long time to sell physical products because I want that guarantee that I will be able to regain that investment. And launching an online shop or having a booth at an art fair just costs a lot of money, as this commenter pointed out. And it can be extremely financially irresponsible to do something like that if you don't have some kind of evidence, some kind of like reason to believe that that will succeed for you. And I think the best way to measure that is like email list subscribers or followers on social media. It is a great way to gauge like how many people are interested in the stuff that you sell, the stuff that you make. You should generally expect anywhere from one to maybe five to seven percent of your social media followers to translate into customers or collectors of your work. And if you do currently consider yourself as someone in phases one or two, but you do really just want to get experience in sales, get experience in selling your work online or in person, I would highly recommend that, again, you keep that initial investment as low as possible. We're focusing, again, on minimizing our financial risk. Maybe for you, that looks like having your work in coffee shops and selling that way. See if you can sell your work in coffee shops or boutiques or your Instagram profile, maybe have sales in your stories, and then package your work with recycled materials you find around the house. So I lived paycheck to paycheck for most of college. I didn't really have a lot of financial support from family members. They were struggling financially too. So aside from money that I get during the holidays, I was on my own for stuff like healthcare, textbooks, new clothes, etc. And that meant that I had to, again, be very risk averse, that I had to be really smart with my money and keep my expenses low and take on part-time jobs and like paid internships and try and sell my work to earn some extra cash. But I did not open an online shop with a ton of inventory and order all the packaging, get the PO box and all that stuff because I didn't have any reason to expect that it would do well. So I sold my work in cafes. I got into art galleries. I tried that route. Um, I was able to actually track down like a like an art fair that my college did every year and I learned that I could actually like table at that art fair I could have a little booth like a cheap folding table that they would provide for me and that was totally free for me to participate in and it's pretty likely that your area might have opportunities like this for you to take advantage of so it doesn't have to be something really insane. You just have to get a little bit creative and do some research. And the opportunities might vary widely depending on where you live. But I think it's important to keep that initial investment, that financial risk low, 
so that you don't get yourself into a position that you seriously regret. I just think that launching an online shop or like a really big venture when you have a really small following is kind of financially irresponsible if you have a huge initial investment. Like I think it just naturally makes sense to keep that initial investment low and honestly, you might not want to hear this, but I think that you should probably wait. You should probably wait until people are asking you like, hey, where can I get prints of this? Do you sell originals? I never want you to be in a position where you can't make rent for the month because you decided to launch your online shop or something. You know what I mean? I want you to do it smart. And doing it smart might mean waiting. It might mean waiting until you have 10,000 Instagram followers and can seriously justify spending that money and recouping those costs. So a few months ago, I was actually planning on launching my online shop. I ordered all of the inventory. Um, I was researching like international shipping requirements, which I am still very confused about, by the way. I was like filling out the paperwork for a PO box. I was like doing all the things, but then the elevators in my building broke. Then my boyfriend and I started planning moving across the country and everything just kind of had to be put on hold. But you'll notice that I waited almost two years from starting this channel to now before opening my online shop. My online shop is still not open. And I actually don't mind that. I want to wait until I feel like I am ready. Until I feel like I have reached the point where I can be like, okay, like, I feel confident enough in my artwork that I want to sell it to you guys and that I've done all of the prep work. I've researched all of the things. I have a P.O. box. Like I've done all of the prep work that I can launch with confidence. And that is what I am waiting for. But between the past couple of months of me planning my shop launch and now, my audience has kind of grown exponentially. We've added almost 50,000 new subscribers in the past like four months, which is absolutely insane. Um, really crazy. So if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Kelsey, welcome. Um, if you're this far into the video and you're not subscribed, maybe consider doing that. Um, we also have a Discord server, so feel free to say hi in the Discord server. I would love to have you over there, and yeah, but it's been crazy. That huge influx of a new audience means that I can confidently say that if I launch my online shop tomorrow, I would sell out in a matter of maybe minutes, hours, days, whatever, but I know that I would make that initial investment back, and I think that is a very important thing to be confident in, at least slightly. You at least want to be sort of sure that you're going to make back like 50% at least the money that you put in, hopefully, right? Like you don't want to lose money from an online shop. You really don't. You really, really don't. Shipping, taxes, all of that stuff, it adds up. It's going to be expensive. In my income reports, I talk about the revenue that I make, but that does not count taxes. It doesn't count expenses. I have to save a quarter of my revenue for taxes. And that is a big chunk of change that only gets larger the more successful you become. But speaking of an online shop, I think it's fine to wait. I think it's totally fine to wait until you feel comfortable. I actually really like the fact that I am not relying on direct sales of my artwork right now. I don't think that makes me any less of an artist. And again, I think it's a smarter way to start an art career, especially in this day and age, because I want to feel comfortable with my work. I want to feel comfortable taking those creative risks. I want to feel comfortable being a beginner. I want to be able to try new things and not have to worry about whether they're good or not. And that is the kind of like environment that I can really only foster if I don't have to worry about the marketability of my work. Instead of needing my online shop to succeed so that I can make rent, I can be more creative with it. I can have fun. I can take those risks creatively without having to compromise on my financial stability. People seem to think that you're not an artist unless the bulk of your income comes from direct sales of your artwork. And I think that is a very dangerous idea to propagate. I think very little else will kill your creativity faster than having to worry constantly about selling paintings and prints 
and making marketable artwork. There is a ton of pressure on you when your entire livelihood hinges on your creative output. And to be perfectly clear, there is a very similar dynamic when it comes to being an art YouTuber. I have to make videos that I'm relatively confident will succeed so that my paycheck doesn't tank from month to month so that I can charge the same rate that I usually would for sponsors without having them say to me, hey, like your stats aren't really commensurate with this rate. We can't pay this. So yeah, but original art, I think is generally speaking, the highest priced item a visual artist tends to offer. And sales of that can fluctuate dramatically. You might sell five paintings one month, 10 the next, and two the month after that. Basing the bulk of your income off of revenue that can jump around so much is terrifying. And that is a situation that I was pretty single-mindedly focused on avoiding when I was thinking about my strategy here. Passive income streams like Patreon and print sales and yeah, YouTube AdSense to a certain degree can serve as like a buffer, basically. Raising the baseline revenue to a point where if you only sell two paintings that month, you're still going to be fine. You're not going to be falling behind on your bills. And I think that also generally speaks to how important it is for artists to have a variety of income streams. All of those income streams that I mentioned, print sales, Patreon, YouTube AdSense, original sales, etc., those can vary, right? It's not like a paycheck that you can regularly expect to receive month to month. It's going to vary, but when you have multiple income streams, they all kind of average out. So that if one stops working as well, you can shift your focus elsewhere and kind of keep your business afloat to continue making ends meet. But the reason that I'm not selling my artwork right now is because I want to feel comfortable with my work before I do that. I want to be willing to take creative risks. I want to feel okay with being a student, with learning still. And I don't want there to be this enormous pressure on my art to be good enough that I feel comfortable selling it. So far in my journey, I've been focused on building the foundation of my business, right? All of this stuff that you see up until this point, this is the foundation. My income report videos up until this point have been hopefully creating the baseline of my business. Sponsorships, YouTube AdSense, Patreon, that is all the stuff that's supposed to keep me afloat when sales of my original art don't do as well. The baseline for the months where I only sell two paintings. But by allowing the direct sales of my artwork to eventually live on top of that baseline, I can feel more comfortable with taking creative risks, with trying new mediums, with spending like, I don't know, a month doing a monthly challenge like Inktober and having all of my attention be laser focused on that and not worrying about literally anything else. And that is not to say that this is the end all be all way of starting an art career. Just that I have a very particular set of preferences and goals, and this is my way of approaching that. You could be doing something totally different and thriving, and that's fine. Again, there are just so many ways of making this work that whatever you wanna do that's best for you, like go for it. You don't have to start a YouTube channel you don't have to necessarily prioritize social media marketing. You could be focused on building a portfolio and then marketing to galleries, then getting your stuff in art fairs, whatever you want to do. All of this is about experimentation, doing a lot of research, maybe contacting people that do something similar to what you eventually want to end up doing and asking them questions, like politely emailing them and be like, hey, like, could I buy you a coffee? Like, could I pay you, you know, whatever your hourly rate is for a little bit of time so we're going to ask you some questions whatever you want to do find people that are doing it already and try and reverse engineer their success there is a formula to this kind of i think or at least like there are very common steps that people tend to take right like youtubers tend to have to spend anywhere from one to three years focused on building their channel and uploading constantly of where they can really start to make money. And even then, that's not a guarantee. Even then, you have to be really focused on the numbers 
and really focused on creating quality content for a particular audience in order to succeed. You really have to like be willing to set your ego at the door and kind of experiment with stuff and learn and just figure out new ways of doing things and constantly improve. So there is not one formula, there's not one roadmap, but I do think that there are ways to reverse engineer success in some ways when you look at more successful people, the kind of people that you want to emulate in your own career. And I think that is an important exercise to be able to do. If you look back at my earlier videos and the way that I talked about my channel and my earlier career, I did not consider my success inevitable. I was very actively looking at the numbers. I was reverse engineering like other people's success. I was paying a lot of attention to other people in my niche, people like Valerie Lynn, Ashley King, Lee Ellickson, Roddy Ramon, Slu, Proko, Chelsea Lang, all of those people. And for some of them, I was reaching out. I was making friends. I was trying to be like, hey, like, how did you do this? Or like, hey, I loved this video. Like, I had this question and seeing if they would answer me. Um, I don't think that you should ever expect answers, but I think it's totally okay to ask questions. But reverse engineering that success, trying to look at the topics of their videos, how they wrote their thumbnails or filmed their videos, the kind of shots they would use, the various angles, all of that stuff. That's what led me to creating my Notion templates and being like as organized as I currently am because I wanted to like, I don't even know how to phrase this. Just like eliminate any avenues of failure, like trying to cross off any possible like pitfalls that I could fall into trying to figure out like exactly all of the steps that I had to do to create a successful YouTube video and then just trying to follow that basically. That is essentially what led me to create that four phase system which again is not the end all be all way of creating an art career. It's just the way that I would create mine and how if you want a career like the one that I have or like any art YouTuber or independent artist that's how I recommend maybe going about it. There is just so much in life that you can't control, but you can control what you do with the free time that you have. And making a plan, breaking it down into like phases, into tasks, into short-term goals, that's how I reduce that overwhelm and anxiety and actually make a plan to get stuff in my life done. Anyway, I will launch physical products when I feel like it, when I feel like I'm ready, and when I have time in my schedule to take that on. And hopefully, when I do that, you guys will feel confident that I have done my due diligence, that I have done my due diligence and figured it out and kind of mapped out all of the possible avenues for failure so that I can launch my online shop as smoothly as possible when that happens. And can we just talk about how cool that is? Like, how cool it is that I've been able to launch a career so far that does not rely on direct sales of my artwork, that I can kind of just make videos and talk to you guys about art and share my journey with my own art and my own career and like post studio vlogs and business advice talks like these or just like share my two cents and you guys like that. And then maybe in the beginning of the video you watch an ad and I get paid and like that's kind of cool. <laughs> That's really cool, actually. And I just like, that's so nice. It's so nice to just be able to share my artwork in a way that feels authentic and comfortable for me. And being able to monetize that is really amazing. Does that make this a typical art career though? Definitely not. Does it mean that I'm not an artist? I don't think so. <laughs> like why why does our definition of, of an artist have to hinge on selling paintings van gogh didn't sell very many paintings in his life and he is arguably the most revered artist in modern times why does our definition of an artist have to hinge on all of these sales quota like what if i only sold one painting a month would that mean would that make me less of a real artist than someone who sold 20. i just think it doesn't make sense being an artist is part of my identity it's the reason that I wake up in the morning. I get itchy. Like, I just feel like something's wrong underneath my skin if I haven't created in a while. And I love making these videos. That is 
a form of art for me and I love oil painting, I love gouache painting, I love mixed media stuff. I love to experiment with my work and I think it's really neat that I have so far been able to build a career that is conducive to all of those things that helps me do all of the stuff that I want to do and in turn I can pay my bills because of it. So yeah. Speaking of art careers, I actually put out a call for a QA and a uh, on my community tab a little while ago so I want to read out some of those questions and kind of answer them and do a little bit of like a Q&A session at the end of this video. A lot of the questions that were asked I have already answered in the first part of this video but some were very specific that I wanted to address individually. That painting lass asks, do you think other artist channels could do the how to be an artist YouTuber gig in their niche without stepping on your toes? Um, so that painting lass, I would say go for it. Like I am just one perspective. I am just one voice. Like you probably have a super unique personal experience that I can't speak to that you can that people want to hear from. And I think right now I'm kind of one of the only people talking about this. And that is weird to me. I think there should be more of us out there. And I think more voices having this conversation will only contribute to the quality and to like the accessibility of this career for people. I want you to have the information that you need to succeed, but I don't have all of the experience out there. You know what I mean? Like I haven't done everything. I can't give you advice if you want to be an animator or if you want to be a storyboarder, if you want to work in an animation studio. Like I don't have that experience, but you might. Um, and you might have perspectives that I don't know about that I would love to hear from. So I think that you still have value to provide. And I think that there is plenty of demand for this content out there to accommodate a lot of creators. Is it necessary to start a channel to have a successful art career? No, definitely not. Like Erin Hansen, for example, is a very successful gallery artist. She has a channel, but she doesn't post on it regularly at all. It's not like a, th like a thing for her really. Um, you have people that just have their art at art fairs, you have people that just have an art Instagram, like, whatever works for you. The best social media platform for you as an artist is the one that you like to be a creator on. So, do with that what you will. I don't think it's necessary. But if you want to, go for it. Like, I think art YouTubers are incredibly public, right? Like you see us out there a lot if you watch YouTube, but we are like a drop of water in an ocean of creative professionals. There are creative professionals who are immensely talented that you've probably never heard of because they work behind the scenes. They work for movie studios, for animation studios. They're CGI artists. There are creative professionals that have a nine to five job. Like art is all around you. It is in the design of your shirts. It's in the rug pattern in your office. Like people have to design everything, everything. And there is an entire creative professional class of people that's out there that you could join if you wanted to. You don't have to be an independent artist like me. You could do editorial work, you could do animation work, like, there's so much out there. So much out there. I don't think that you need a channel to succeed. And I think that artist YouTubers, because, because we are so public facing, can kind of distort, like, the perception of what available art careers look like. But there really are so many options out there, and all it takes is a little bit of research to find something that suits your interests specifically. Okay, let's look at some other questions over here. Yeah, I just like kind of generally think that there's room for everybody on YouTube and like, if you don't want to start a channel, don't start one. You know what I mean? It's not for everybody. This job is kind of hard. There is a lot that goes into it. You also have to be willing to like, not absorb hate comments and stuff and it's kind of weird to get like so much feedback on your work and like the way that you look and the way that you present yourself all the time um i've been getting some more hate comments just because i've been growing so fast recently and it's been weird to experience like people have opinions about everything about my bangs my glasses like 
the way that my fingers look, the way that I move my hands on camera, and it's very disorienting. I don't think that our brains are meant to take in that much feedback, but nonetheless, on the internet, it's provided for you. So I don't think that it's for everybody, um, but I think that if you want it to be for you, it could be. All right, more questions. Atlas Guitari asks, how has your idea of success changed as you've grown? That's a great question. I think it's become more about like how I feel and more about like work-life balance rather than like specific metrics that I want to meet. Like, yeah, I do have a goal to hit 100K before the end of the year, but I really only need like one more good month to be able to meet that. And that's crazy. So it's become less important to me. And also like when I hit 50K or 75K, it's not like I made it or anything, you know what I mean? It's like I woke up the same way that I wake up normally and I cuddled my boyfriend, like I took a shower, I got dressed, like my life didn't radically change. I wasn't able to afford like a Ferrari or anything, you know what I mean? It's like you build up those metrics so deeply in your head, but like when you achieve them, it kind of feels a little bit empty inside. I think it's better to have an idea of success wrapped around like your personal or creative fulfillment rather than like metrics if that makes sense but that's kind of how it's changed for me rebecca chin asks do you ever feel like your content creation is at odds with your art sure yeah i mean like youtube is a job art is also a job sometimes they conflict sometimes i make a video that i feel really passionate about like a vlog but it doesn't do well and if I'm going to be a good YouTuber, I have to be like, okay, like, let's look at the videos that I've done really well over the past, you know, 90 days and make more of those. But that might not fit perfectly into my goals as an artist or like the kind of videos that I even feel passionate about making. So it's a balance, I would say, like, it's hard to accommodate all of that stuff together. And that's why I'm thinking about having a second channel, maybe, just like for vlog stuff, because historically on this channel, vlogs have not performed well, but videos like this one and videos where I talk about money and business and entrepreneurship, specifically for artists, has tended to do extremely well. So it's kind of all about balancing that. So Renaissance Girl asks a bunch of questions, but I will only answer a couple. They ask, how can you make money with your art as a beginner artist? I mean, like I said earlier, I would generally advise you to build up an audience and really kind of build up your portfolio before trying to make money. Um, no one can buy your art if they don't know you exist, which is the inevitable kind of harsh truth of the matter. I think that you should just kind of try to build up an audience a little bit first. Um, if my kind of career is the one that you have, you can also build up a portfolio and start like art licensing and doing stuff like that you could apply to galleries but generally you want your art to be at a certain point before you really do that but maybe you are able to find like a specific niche or style that's particularly in demand for a certain industry and be able to fit in that way that might not require an immense amount of skill so it depends <laughs> um I can't really answer that question specifically for you without knowing like the kinds of art that you want to make like and the industries that you're interested in going like the subjects etc so it just it depends a lot of this stuff like just depends which is why I think it's so important for more people to get involved in this community and share their own journey and their own stories and their own bits of advice because like I only have so much experience and I think that the more people again that are involved in this conversation the better so Renaissance Girl also asks should I try taking commissions even though I am a beginner artist uh yeah if you want to gain experience at doing commissions, then totally offer them. I would not price them at a particularly high level. Like your focus should be to gain experience in sales and taking commissions and like just practicing your art rather than like making a ton of money. Because again, at that early stage, you want to be working on like your skill set and your portfolio rather than like trying to aggressively monetize. Renaissance Girl also asks, and this was a fairly common question, how do you go about paying your taxes as an independent artist? I pay quarterly estimated taxes to the IRS 
through their website. And then at the end of the year, I'd file everything like normal with all of my revenue stuff, all the paperwork. I kind of log everything through the service called Wingspan and then Wingspan generates reports for me and stuff and like does all of that basically. Um, I'm not a tax professional. I would recommend that you consult one so that they can give you the best, most accurate advice for wherever you live and whatever your circumstances are. So it's not hard. Everyone thinks it's really hard. It's not hard. It's really easy. It's just important to save like a quarter of what you make, generally speaking, as a freelancer to be able to pay taxes, which is again, a lot. And it only goes up the more that you make, but it's important to reserve that money. And again, like you can diminish your tax obligations with business expenses and like charitable donations and kind of like all of that stuff. There is a whole system in place that a tax professional will be able to best help you navigate. VJ Hunter asks, anything you would have done differently when initially starting or any mistakes people should avoid when starting their art career? Yes. Again, like I said earlier, I would not make any risky financial decisions. I would play it safe, have a part-time job, like have that be your focus, but also don't take any unnecessary risks. I really do wish that I could tell you exactly what you had to do in order to succeed as an artist and be the kind of creative professional you really want to be, but I can't. Everyone's journey is really different, and what's worked for me might not work for you. You might have to do something completely different. I started multiple art careers before landing on one that worked best for me. And that's what other creators here on YouTube, like Mimi Moo Illustration comes to mind as someone who had to try multiple things in order to eventually stumble on a win winning format for them. So it just depends. Everyone's journey is really different. Being a creator here on YouTube and an artist is an option, but luckily for you, if that's not what you want, it is far from being the only option out there. The financial instability that seemed kind of inherent to an art career really held me back from starting. And one of the biggest regrets that I have is not starting earlier. I don't regret it necessarily, but it would have been a really great decision. And I would have been able to get to where I am now much earlier had I just started earlier and gone through that initial phase of just like being bad aggressively and just learning a lot until I could figure out how to be good at this job. That financial instability can just like seem so much like an insurmountable obstacle or like an immutable aspect of being an artist, but I just can't express to you enough that it doesn't have to be that way. And if you are interested in learning a bit more about how I've structured my business and how I've made this all work for me, I would highly recommend that you watch this playlist right here. And that's it for me. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.